Hey, what's going on? It's Jordan here from HardcoreMusicStudio.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you a little drum mixing trick for bigger room sounds. So let me just show you the drums I'm gonna work with here in this video. So this track here labeled Hall, that's my room track. It's a stereo room track. Uh, it's just called Hall because it was recorded basically in a hallway outside of the live room. Here's how it sounds. So I've just bypassed all my processing just because it makes things a little clearer in this video, but it has a kind of a cool vibe to it. It makes the drum sound a little bit bigger, but it's a little bit muddy on the kicks, but I like the way the snare sounds. I think this room track could add some, some body and thickness to the snare, uh, but I don't want to kind of mess it all up with the the bleed of the cymbals and, and the low end of the kick and everything. So here's a little trick I figured out to basically get more of just the snare out of the room tracks and not uh, the rest of the kit and basically have more control over the balance between those. So we're going to do that using a side chain on a gate. So let's bring up a gate here. The one I like to usually use is just the one that comes with Pro Tools, the expander gate. So usually a gate just works by, you know, it just opens up and lets the audio through at a certain threshold that you set. In this version of Pro Tools, the meters are kind of jumpy on these plugins, but that's okay, you'll still get the point here. But basically we're gonna use a side chain, so we're gonna send a bus of the snare track to this plugin so that it opens up based on the snare that it's getting fed from the bus. So it's probably just easier to show you than explain it. So here's my snare track here. It's just a sample that I uh, replaced from a live recording. So let's just choose any bus, let's choose 19. Set it to zero. We're gonna make this pre-fader just so that you know, no matter what automation I do with this main fader here, it's not going to affect the way that this whole bus setup and the gate is working. So we're sending this snare signal out bus 19 pre-fader. And then on our gate here, we're gonna select a key input, bus 19. So that means it's no longer gonna be looking at the audio from this hallway track. It's going to be looking at the audio from the bus that I selected here. And that's how it's going to determine when to open and close the gate. And in order to enable that, we also have to hit this little key button here. So now let's check this out. See how now it's only opening on the snare hits? That's because it's listening to the snare audio now. So that's obviously a little bit too short. So let's lengthen out this release. And it's a little too extreme too. So the nice thing about this is this range control, that's basically, you know, how much it's gonna turn down the signal in between the hits. So let's adjust this. And this is cool because, you know, I don't really want to completely remove the rest of the kit from the room track necessarily in this case. I just want to get the snare to be a little bit louder. So I'm just turning it down in between those hits and then it's going to jump up by about 6 dB when the snare hits. So let's put in the rest of the drums and see how this works. So now we're getting a lot more of that room sound on the snare, but we're not getting that kick muddiness from the rest of it. So let's bypass this plugin and I'll put it back in so you can compare. So we've accomplished a bigger sound on the snare with that room ambience um, without adding the muddiness and the bleed from the kick and even the cymbals there. So it's a common problem for room tracks to be hardly usable because there's maybe so much cymbal in them or so much 
kick and, and just muddiness from the kit when really what we want a lot of the time, at least in my case, I always just want more room sound on the snare and I don't want it for a lot of the other pieces of the kit, especially for this kind of heavier type of music. So try it out, put this first in your chain for room tracks and it basically is, it's almost like adding a fader of just turning up the snare track versus the rest of the kit in the room mics and it's, uh, it's really useful that way. And by the way, of course, you could also copy this to the kick track copy the bus there uh, the send so that you can also feed you know the kick or the toms or whatever to the room track in this exact same way you know let's say the kick and snare and tom sounded great but there's too much cymbal so just use the same bus and send all of the kick snare and toms to the plug-in like this so that it's opening up there and closing down a little bit to duck the cymbals out lots of things you can do with this i don't use side chaining a whole lot but this is one case where i find it really useful so hopefully this little drum mixing tip helps you out if you're not on my email list if you're just somehow stumbling across this video for the first time i want you to go to hardcoremusicstudio.com and click to sign up for my free mixing cheat sheet you're going to get a ton more free videos like this and uh, make sure you just subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel as well to check out uh, every new video as it's posted. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon.